We're officially in week 20 of the NHL season. Guys are campaigning to make hockey violent again. Other guys are actually trying to do it. And in the process, we got coaches calling it a dumb league. Week 20 was another chaotic chapter of the 2024 NHL season. So let's cover it all in this video. Sunday Blues. Considering that the entire world was gearing up for the Super Bowl, the NHL still had two early games on. Ovi and the Caps took on the Canucks, and what do you know, Ovi scores again, and although he's had a tough season, don't let the Russian machine get hot as he's got goals in five straight. The Canucks were able to squeeze out the win after a brutal giveaway and great finish from noted locker room cancer JT Miller. Damn good season for a guy that everyone said you can't win with. Love the bounce back that he's having, but the other game saw the Blues absolutely clap the Canadians. Jake Allen was already in Super Bowl mode as he decided to let in seven goals. How nice. St. Louis has been quietly sneaking around the wildcard spot with some solid play as of late, while the Canadians are just praying for these years to go by quick. I think Slavkovsky is really starting to become more comfortable with the NHL pace, which is great news for the Habs, but outside of that, not much to like about their season. Before we hop into Monday, I want to thank Vaporfresh for sponsoring today's video. Vaporfresh is a non-toxic plant-based spray that cleans and deodorizes equipment the right way. I live in a condo, so I give my equipment a quick little spray of Vaporfresh so the wife doesn't hate me for the smell, and then I hang it up to dry. When it's time to play, my equipment is back to smelling fresh and I'm ready to go. You can grab your bottle today for 10% off by clicking the link in our description. Monday, Jack of all trades. The Devils hoisted the Kraken and Jack Hughes sends this puck where Mama hides the cookies to make it a two-zip game. The Devils are fighting for the last wildcard spot in the East and they took this one 3-1 and Jack Hughes gave a subtle backhanded compliment to his goaltenders by saying when you get the saves, it's much easier to win. He ain't wrong, but that should go over just smoothly in the locker room. Rangers shut out the Flames who have been on a solid run lately. This loss snapped a four-game winning streak for the Flames, but Jacob Markstrom was incredible in this one yet again, and he continues to be a goalie to watch towards the deadline. The Rangers continue their role by leading the Metro. Speaking of teams rolling in the Metro, the Flyers bang out another win against the future Salt Lake City, I mean the Arizona Coyotes. Arizona is going through a lot of relocation and ownership issues right now, shocker, but we will likely get clarification on the future of that organization in the coming weeks. In the meantime, Philly and Torts continue to be my favorite dogs in the NHL. The late game saw the Golden Knights versus the Wild, which included Alex Petrangelo's 1,000th game. They celebrated by losing to Minnesota, who is also competing for the last wild card spot in the West. Tuesday, McJesus has risen. In the late game, we saw the return of 2023 McDavid as he recorded six points, all of them being assists, against the Detroit Red Wings. He was dominant all night, but this spinorama pass takes the vapor fresh, disgusting goal of the week courtesy of McJesus himself. The Oilers, of course, would win this one, and after giving the entire league a head start, it's not out of the question that McDavid finds a way to win the scoring title. Although, the rest of the league should be really terrified for the return of Phil the Thrill. That's right, the three-time Stanley Cup champion, known for pounding hot dogs and being an absolute winner, was skating in Abbotsford for a conditioning stint. The rumor is that he may join Vancouver for the upcoming playoff run, and that could be a solid fit considering that coach Rick Tockett was known to be the Phil Whisperer in his days as an assistant coach in Pittsburgh. Brad Marchand also celebrated 1,000 career games, and despite how much you love to hate him, you don't reach that milestone if you're not a great player. Unfortunately, everyone this week is celebrating 1,000 games by losing as they lose to Tampa 3-2 in a shootout. Tuesday, the NHL also officially announced that Morgan Riley was to be suspended five games for his cross-check to the head on Ridley Gregg, actor's empty net slap shot. Everyone had an opinion on this, including 37-year-old Ryan Reeves, who campaigned to make hockey violent again when asked about the situation. I personally love the tagline, it's catchy, let's throw it on a t-shirt, but you can't say that and then get bodied by a 5'9 Aussie and Nathan Walker. That's a tough look, but the Leafs actually played their best game in months despite missing Marner and Tavares due to sickness and Riley due to suspension. Bobby McMahon stepped up big time recording his first career hat trick and only Leaf fans know that the team plays their best hockey when their multi-million dollar forwards aren't in the lineup. Interesting. Wednesday. Somebody save Sid. This was a late night of hockey which meant it only brought more attention to how cooked the Pittsburgh Penguins are. They lost 5-2 to the Panthers and when you watch the difference between these two teams, the Penguins just look so far from where they need to go. 
I believe the Panthers are the gold standard in the East, and this game was just another example of how they suffocate teams to death on the forecheck. Somebody, for the love of God, just go save Sidney Crosby. Elsewhere in the league, my future cup champs and the Sharks got shut out 1-0 as they gear up for a push for the playoffs. Their push for the playoffs ain't going well, that's for damn sure, and Wednesday would wrap up with the Wild winning their fifth straight against the future Salt Lake City Sea Lions. Thursday, Matty Hattie. The Leafs took on the Philadelphia Flyers, and whenever John Tortorella gets in front of any media, you sit down, take notes, and listen because it's likely gold. Prior to the game, the Leaf media asked Torts about the Ridley Gregg empty nutter, and to which he responded with, the NHL is a dumb league. That was the soundbite that everyone else used, but the whole quote was actually much more of an intelligent answer regarding how young the NHL has become and how that's changed the way coaches have approached the game. Unfortunately for Torts and the Flyers, Matthews would pot a hattie in this one, bringing him to 45 goals on the season, and we're still only in February. That's absolutely absurd, and after this win, the Leaf Cup parade is still on. Columbus Blue Jackets also fired GM Jarmel Kekalainen, which pretty much seemed inevitable. The guy hired Mike Babcock, and after what happened at the beginning of the season, it only seemed like a matter of time before he got the axe as well. We also had great news as Connor Bedard returned from a broken jaw. He gets an assist, but ultimately, Sid the middle-aged man pots two goals to lead the Penguins to a 4-1 win. I wonder if Sid's back is starting to hurt from carrying the Penguins. In other news, Jack Hughes once again had a soundbite after chirping Victor Arvidsson on their way to the box, saying that people pay to watch him play. That's two sound bites in the same week. Kid is on fire, but the frustration boiled over for Hughes as the Devils lose 2 1 to the Kings. The Canucks took on the Red Wings for the second time in five days, and after losing to a Jake Wallman penalty shot in overtime, Wallman hit the gritty, and the Canucks did not forget. Vancouver handled Detroit rather easily in a 4 1 win, and Zadorov decided to hit his own gritty while Wallman complained to the ref. That's good stuff right there. The Dallas Stars spanked the Predators 9-2, my goodness. Matt Duchesne scored two goals against his old team and then proceeded to perform at Tootsies in Nashville. Can't make it up. This is once again another shameless opportunity for me to tell you how much I like the Dallas Stars to come out of the West. I think they're a solid team up and down the lineup with great goaltending, but because I said that, feel free to roast me when they get eliminated in the first round. Friday, Hockey History. Friday was an extremely rare night when the NBA, NFL, and MLB all didn't have games on, so the NHL decided that they're going to take advantage by only scheduling one game between the future Salt Lake City Sea Lions and the Carolina Hurricanes. That's a riveting matchup, and the game went exactly how you'd expect. The Hurricanes scored 16 seconds into the game and never looked back as they steamrolled the Yotes 5-1. However, on Friday, we did witness women's hockey history in the PWHL as Toronto beat Montreal in front of a record crowd of 19,000 plus fans. Toronto's Kristen Campbell made 30 saves in a shutout, and it's just another example that shows the demand for women's hockey. Saturday night, night of the blowout. The hate is starting to heat up and the Bruins and the Kings did their part in making hockey violent again with an early tilt in the first. A lot of back and forth in this one, but it would be rookie Brant Clark in OT to pot the winner and that right there is a beautiful first career goal. The Kings beat the Bruins and hand them their fourth straight loss. The Panthers spank the Lightning 9-2 and that's a franchise record 11th straight road win for the Panthers. Florida is an absolute wagon, and of course, that didn't sit well with the Lightning, who wanted to mix things up. The Panthers are a team that can play any style of game, and they were in a completely different class in this one against their arch nemesis. Speaking of 9-2 wins, the Leafs also laid the smack down on the Ducks. Matthews netted another hat trick, which he goes back to back, and that allowed him to hit 48 goals in the season. There was some beef in this game as well, as Radko Gudis made his return to Toronto ever since he screamed in Joseph Wall's face after the Panthers eliminated Toronto in the second round. Despite this attempt at violence, it was an ugly one for the Ducks, and the last time there was multiple 9-2 wins in NHL history was December of 1917. The Devils and the Flyers squared off in the stadium series, and Devils captain Nico Heischer set the tone right away by scoring 32 seconds into this one. A couple of big hits and a few antics in between the whistles, but the Devils pick up an important two points after a roller coaster of a week. By the time we got to the Jets and Canucks in the late game, the entire league was sick of each other's shit, 
and the fireworks kept going in this one. Miller takes a shot at Shifley, Vancouver thinks he acted like he got shot, and the hate continues to boil over. Shifley would get the last laugh, however, as he'd pot a goal and record three assists as the Jets take this one 4-2 over the NHL's league-leading Canucks. Standings check sees the Panthers slowly creeping up behind the Canucks. The Blackhawks are at the bottom, but at least Connor Bedard is back. Kucherov leads the NHL in points with 94, and Matthews is starting to pull away in the Rocket Richard race. So, what did you think about Week 20 in the NHL? A lot of drama and chaos went on to choose from, but let us know your favorite part of the week. And if you want to see some of our deeper breakdowns from this past week, click on any of the links here and subscribe to the channel.